Well, hello everyone. We are live with Barbarian. So my name is Ayan, and um, this is a game I used to play when I was a kid. And uh, it's uh, one of the most difficult games I ever played. Not because the game itself was difficult, but you will see the way it is played. In fact, it's a very competent game by its time, and it's a really nice animated and. Uh, it has lore, it has a nice story, it has a lot of things that make a good game except for the the controls. So it's a 1987 game, so you can see by its time it was pretty good. Um, <clears throat> the thing about this game is that you would think, and it's a very good game to be played with normal controls, like the arrows, uh, perhaps the space to, to swing your, your sword or whatever, uh, but no. For some reason, and I cannot understand why, the programmers decided to make this game um, controlled by the function keys. So that row of keys that are on the top of your keyboard. So it's a, it's a, it's a uh, just this this row and nothing else, and that makes for an interesting uh, mechanic. I will, I'm going to show you how it's played in a little bit. Um, the actual part uh, of this run is the fact that I did a TAS, which is a tool assistant run, also called, as, called uh, known as TAS. And um, in doing it, I wanted to pursue the fastest solution to the fastest uh, um, end game possible. But in the process, I figured out that the fastest solution was also pacifist. So as long as you don't kill anyone, you are also in the course of being the, the fastest possible. So. Without further ado, let's see how the game is played first. So for this, I'm going to use a gimmick, which is turning my camera down. So now you should see my keyboard, and I'm going to turn the light on. So this is my keyboard, and I'm going to display the function keys. So you can see here, All right? So, oops. I'm going to start the game. And you will hear, so, warning. Barbarian. Sorry, that was a, uh, that warning wasn't too, uh, too timely. But anyway, this is the game, right? This is a famous Barbarian uh, starting noise. And and the funny fact is this is one of the first synthesized voices made over the PC speaker made in the OS, at least. And... Imagine you bought this game or you brought it home and this is the first impression you got of the game. You would, you would think you are in for a treat. But then the game starts asking questions and this is what it gets funny. So select control device and no matter what you choose here, you're, <laughs> you um, are going to have a bad time. So let's choose keyboard. Sorry, I didn't mean to move that. Yes. Keyboard. So now you select the speed and this option was merely to compensate for the fact that in the time, in the time that game came out, there were many different CPUs to choose from and many different frequencies, and there was no actual timing, uh, universal timing for the games, so you had to choose something that was more um, appropriate for your computer. So since I'm running this in, the, uh, in DOSBox in 20,000 cycles, if I choose speed one, um, you will see the game is impossible to control. So, something like that, right? So, I propose we die, die and try again with a much better speed, which is 4. And now we can start. So let's talk about the controls here. You can see my fingers. The controls go from F1 to F11, if I'm not wrong. Um, F1, 2, 3 and 4 are directions, so I can go to the left. And die, sorry. I can go to the right. And F5, I can stop. F6, I can jump. That's a monster. Let's go back. Um, F7, I can run. But I need to remember that F5 stops because if I don't stop in time, I'm going to die. And that happens very, uh, very often. Uh, F8 attacks. So F8. So you need to memorize and you need to lose all of your um, your your brain's um, mechanical motions or the, the, the things that you're used to and start rewiring your brain for this control scheme. 
and there's still more things to be done if you press oh that was a surprise if you press uh, F9 um, F I oh, know. See, I, I'm still confused to this day about this control. So, if you press space, you get to this menu where you can pick up or leave your your sword in the ground. So, it's not that you go over the sword and it's automatically picked up, as you will imagine in a good game. But you have to basically you walk, you stop, you press space to change the menu, and you press pick up to get the sword, then you select the sword, <laughs> and then you come back, and that's it. So it's a whole process to make the, the pickup of, a, of a, a sword, an arrow, or a, or a bow. So you can imagine that's not a good thing for a game. Um, but the funniest thing about this game, the most charming thing, is that you, you do rallies, you do have a panic button. And that panic button, what it does is releases the sword in panic and runs to the other direction right so you can see the running animation if you press again you switch sides so basically that's the fastest way you can transport or you can move in this game so if you're in a hurry you can just run through monsters they're not gonna kill you at this point you need to stop because there's a trap here oh. see there's a lot of traps in this game and you need to stop, but uh, there I missed the key. I meant to press F5, but I press F6. So I jumped and I died. So you can see how ridiculous the control scheme is. And the fact that I use uh, the tools to, to make a speed run makes it um, a more enjoyable. It was, it, it was a bit more enjoyable process because I had complete control and I couldn't make mistakes. Um, so. I propose we start with the task and you can see the things that I did to, to solve this game as fast as possible. So back to me. I have the video player here and this is in the process of booting and again um, headphone alert. You're gonna hear that barbarian again and loud noises. So, there you go again. Barbarian. And now the menus are, of course, selected as fast as possible, and then the game starts. So first, first things first. Um, since it's a speed run, I choose the, the chose the, the fastest way to transport, which is just to run in panic. So there will be a lot of panic running here, as you can see. This first enemy you can just run across. He's not gonna kill you if you don't stay um, in the place. You can keep running in this uh, part. You can just jump over this bear thing, go down, keep running, go down this ladder. As you can see, I haven't killed anyone and I had not need to kill anyone yet. Then you keep running, jump over this guy, jump over the trap bridge. So if you play this normally, you will fall in every single uh, trap, in every single screen, and you're going to die very quickly. So I need to memorize the traps in this game. But in this case, um, the task goes over them very quickly. Here, a little uh, bit of a glitch. You can jump over this uh, cliff, and then you can stop. Uh, you can go to the next screen without dying, then jump over these guys, continue running there. And this game, this task is all about running. Here we take um, a fall death on purpose because it's faster to die from the fall and, and transition the screens than going down the stairs. And then we, when we get back to the screen, we are already down there. We lost a life, but we in this task we plan the use of uh, death so that we uh, finish the game with a life remaining. So we keep on running. <clears throat> Yes, indeed, speed strats. That's uh, what it's all about. Here we run, jump, run, in pa uh, run back, uh, go down the stairs, keep running. Here we jump over the dog, 
you can see there's bows and arrows around. We don't pick them up because we don't need them actually. You don't need to, to, to beat this game. Here it's a long way down. You can see here how slow it is to go down by stairs, so it was a very good thing that we jumped off the cliff. So jump this guy, go down the stairs again, and this is um, four, the next four screens are just duels you have uh, against these cars, but we're not going to fight anyone, we're just going to run in panic and that skips them. So as long as they don't attack you and hit you or you're running very slowly, um, you're fine. So keep on running. Sometimes we use the normal run instead of the panic run because we want to run in the same direction we are facing and panic always switches you around. So when we want to switch um, the direction, we use the panic button. If we want to run the direction we are facing, we just use the normal run. And the normal run animation is the guy with a brave, brave face. But when it's in panic, he has like a uh, very scared attitude. So now we are on the bottom of the adventure. This is the lowest place. It's kind of like a young, young uh, adventure where we, you discover your dark side. And here you uh, are going to face the dragon and learn to use the shield, except that we're not going to do anything of that because we're going to run away scared. However, we need to pick the shield because that's the way you beat the last boss. Uh, spoiler alert, here we have to skip this uh, trap, pick up the shield with all of the commands I showed you before to pick up uh, an object, and then we go up again. And here is where we come back from the ashes of our existence and start uh, taking into a, a hero attitude. So, we go up, up and up and up, and uh, this is the hardest enemy to handle because you need to fall in a very precise uh, point in on the left of the screen to be able to go up the stairs and that he doesn't attack you so it was pretty hard to optimize but in the end it was it was possible here this is a skip so normally you go down and up again but here you can just jump around and get into this ladder now we're gonna have the second death where we allow ourselves to be killed so that we spawn again on the top which avoids a whole bunch of running and, and climbing so that's the second death for you. And we keep going. Keep running and beware of the traps. Here's a very nasty trap where we have to avoid for a couple of frames before we keep on running. Um, here we go down and this is perhaps one of the possible optimizable um, screens where probably you shouldn't need to jump, jump backwards but that's the best solution I found. But perhaps it's a way to be more direct. Here you go down again. So the same uh, idea again of going down and facing uh, enemies. Uh, deathless category. Yeah, but it, it would be so so similar to this one. Also, uh, a non-pacifist will be very similar to this one. So I I, I guess I converse to the to the funniest, most entertaining category possible here. Here you're, gonna, you're going to see a glitch where we get into the middle of the stair and counts like a floor and then we can just run across these very nasty enemies before the final enemy. The final enemy is a mage to, that, that is killed without hitting him directly but by reflecting his aggression. So it's kind of like a still psychological uh, kind of story where we reflect the aggression and then that's where we uh, defeat him and when now we jump again to die again but this time when we die that's the trigger for the game to uh, be completed for some reason you die and you complete the game and that's uh, time so a very strange game with a very strange control scheme um, but I hope it was entertaining and I hope this helped you recover from the Aventoya run, which already uh, triggered my uh, cursed my life and triggered my next nightmares. And I wanted to also to to watch the Tenmikus uh, Test Drive Three run as much as I could before. But um, I hope you keep um, enjoying enjoying this event. Thank you very much for the organizers and for the the opportunity to be here with you. See you.